Shalom, beloved family. It's your girl, Sophia Spiritual Light, and we're here with part four of The Secret Laws of America, The Hammurabi Code of Babylon, or Marduk. Apparently, um, you know, this is why you want to read primary sources, because I... Why they got one line in there that says Babylon is Marduk, one line, and so when you get into Marduk, then you understand what you're dealing with. These are not um, natural uh, uh, people to this planet because um, if you, uh, Spirit Science has a great uh, video that I watched a long time ago on Marduk and, and basically the meteor that crashed and, and all of that. And then if you tie, you can tie this also directly to the Books of Remembrance with Sammy Heise. You can tie all of this directly to the Bible. And so um, with this understanding, you really get to see um, how things go. And so um, I definitely, I put the links in the bio um, where you can go and download this book. If for some reason they snatch it, shoot me an email. I have my copy. I'll send it to you. And, um, you know, this, this stuff is, you got to go and read it for yourself. I'm doing a reading here to get into the ley line. Of course, y'all know how I do. And then um, I'm still inviting everybody to go read it for yourself. Look up the words, figure out what they mean and figure out how they have overlaid their system directly over top of this in direct con conjunct uh, uh, directly contrary to the orders of the Most High. All of this stuff is null and void based on the Magna Carta, based on the Cosmic Laws, based on the Ten Commandments, null and void, null and void. And so my next thing once I finish this is to look and see if I can find the full commandments of Moses because I would like to know what exactly the Most High said for us to do, and I I don't I don't feel like this this journey is over until I know until I see that in writing. So, um, anyway, let's start with Code um, 201. Of course, we've already done one through 200, but um, let me see from 66 to 99 was missing, and that's going to be. Um, they they found it on the back side of the thing or something like that like almost like it was a race but they couldn't erase it so they just they just like cleared it over and rewrote it on the back because those were kind of like the most important ones for their commerce and what allowed their merchants to charge usury which is completely illegal um by cosmic law by every law every law every statute every order of the most high usury is illegal um specifically and that's exactly what 30, 66 through um, 99 deal with is usury. And so, um, again, we're going to start with 201. So we have one more video after that. Um, after this, we're going to do 201 through 250. All right. So 201, statute 201. If he has made the tooth of a poor man to fall out, he shall pay one third of a mina of silver. Statute 202. If a man, so again, I mean, we saw that in the bottom part of this that if you are poor your life does not matter so if you want to know why they have made black people to be poor um why only celebrities matter and all of that literally if you're a poor person your life does not matter it's just a portion of silver for them to throw your way so that they will leave you alone and that's exactly how they treat us so this is where you get your black codes this is where you get your red lining this is where you get your jim crow laws everything comes from here because as if they could label us as poor people and tell us as former slaves and this and that and all this trash that they lied about us you know about then they could treat us like the they can treat the poor in their in their governing document that they operate by all right statute 202 if a man has struck the strength of a man who is great above him, he shall be struck in the assembly with 60 strokes of a cow hide whip. Golly, there, there's your slavery, your lashes that the, the, the slaves, the slave masters would give to you. There you go. If you, let me keep going. Statute 203. If a man of gentle birth has struck the strength of a man of gentle birth, who is like himself, he shall pay one mina of silver. Basically, if you hit somebody 
Uh, if you're high class and you hit somebody, y'all settle y'all dispute with money. If you're high class and it's a low caste person, y'all settle y'all dispute with lashes. So we have a two tier, uh, well, more tiers than two in this system, but right here, two tiered system with, so if a police officer, it don't say constable, maybe it'll get to it. If a constable kills a black man, I'll just throw some money at his family. That's according to their law. That's what they can do. <sighs> you guys, I'm really, I'm, I'm having a very difficult time. I promise. All right. Statute 204. If a poor man has struck the strength of a poor man, he shall pay 10 shekels of silver. Statute 205. If a gentleman's servant has struck the strength of a free man, one shall cut off his ear. Okay, maybe that's how Van Gogh lost his ear. Okay, I'm sorry. I, that just... <laughs> so many stories in history make sense when you know this code. So many stories. And I'm, I, I've read a lot. So statute 206. If a man has struck a man in a quarrel and has caused him a wound, that man shall swear, I do not strike him knowing and shall answer for the doctor. I mean, he has to pay for it, which is where you get your Medicare and stuff. Statute 207, if he has died of his blows, he shall swear, and if he be of gentle birth, he shall pay half a mean of silver. That's why you had them kill all these people in the nursing homes and the hospitals during that uh, and, uh, outbreak, and it doesn't matter if you die in the hospital and it was at the hands of the, uh, the, the, the gentle person, it doesn't matter. They just pay you half a mean of silver, and your family has to be satisfied, so your life is worth half a mina of silver to them, which they outlawed silver. So anyway, statute 208, if he be the son of a poor man, and actually it pays better to for you to die because then they don't have to, they can get their money right away. The hospital can, the doctor can get their money first and then nobody else will get their money. Anyway, statute 208, if he be the son of a poor man, he shall pay one third of a mina of silver. Statute 209, if a man has struck a gentleman's daughter and caused her to drop what is in her womb, he shall pay 10 shekels of silver for what was in her womb. So your baby's life is only worth 10 shekels of silver. That's it. <sighs> Y'all, I'm having a hard time. Okay, statute 211. If the daughter of a poor man through his blows, he has caused to drop that which is in her room. He shall pay five shekels of silver. So if it's a poor woman, your baby's not even worth 10. Your baby's only worth five. Okay. To statute 212. If that woman has died, he shall pay half a mean of silver. So if the baby dies, it may be mm, five or 10. If the woman dies, mm, throw him half a mina. That's how much your life is worth, woman. Half a mina. If a man hits you and you die, half a mina. Okay, I'm sorry. Statute 213. If he has struck a gentleman's maidservant and has caused her to drop which is in her womb, he shall pay two shekels of silver. So if you're a maidservant, yeah, you only worth two. You got ten? Oh, my goodness. That was the parable. That was in the parable. You got 10. Wait, we need to go back and reread that parable and put in baby. We need to go back. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. We need to go back and reread that parable, y'all. Okay. <sighs> Statute 214. If that maidservant has died, he shall pay one third of a mean of silver. Statute 215. If a doctor has treated a gentleman for a severe wound with a bronze lancet and has cured the man or has opened an abscess of the eye for a gentleman with the bronze lancet and has cured the eye of the gentleman, he shall take 10 shekels of silver. So now you have doctor's rates, standardized doctor's rates. 216. If he, the patient, be the son of a poor man, he shall take five shekels of silver. Statute 217, if he be the be a gentleman's servant, the master of the servant shall give two shekels of silver to the doctor. 
Statute 218, if the doctor has treated a gentleman for a severe wound with a lancet of bronze and has caused a gentleman to die, or has opened up an abscess in the eye for a gentleman with a bronze lancet and has caused the loss of the gentleman's eye, one shall be cut off his hands. God dang! If the doctor has treated the severe wound of a slave of a poor man with a bronze lesson as has caused his death, he shall render the slave for a slave. Statute 220. If he has opened the abscess with a bronze lance and has made him lose his eye, he shall pay money half his price. Oh, he has to pay back half what his price was. Statute 221. If the doctor has cured the shattered limb of a gentleman or has cured the diseased bowel, the patient shall give five shekels of silver to the doctor. Statute 222. If the son of a poor man, he shall give three shekels of silver. 223. If a, if a gentleman's servant, the master shall give the slave two shekels of silver to the doctor. Statute 224. If a cow doctor or sheep doctor, now think about this. This is 2242 BC. They had cow and sheep doctors. <sighs> Y'all, all history is fake. All right. If a cow doctor or a sheep doctor has treated a cow or sheep for a severe wound and cured it, the owner of the cow or sheep shall give one sixth of a shekel of silver to the doctor as his fee. Statute 225. If he has treated a cow or sheep for a severe wound and has caused it to die, he shall give the quarter of his price to the owner of the ox or sheep. Statute 226. If a brander without consent of the owner of the slave has branded a slave with an indelible mark one shall cut off the hands of that brander god dang statute 227 i mean why would you be doing that what is a situation where you're going to brand somebody without the permission i mean this statute 227 if a man has deceived the brander and has caused him to brand an indelible mark on the slave that man shall one that man one shall kill and bury him in his house the brander shall swear, not knowing I brand him, and shall go free. Statute 228. If a builder has built a house for a man and has completed it, he shall give him his fee as two shekels of silver per sar of house. Look at this. The builder's fee is two shekels. Okay. Statute 229. If a builder has built a house for a man and has not made strong his work, and the house he built has fallen and he has caused the death of the owner of the house that builder shall be put to death statute 230 you know they don't want that if he has caused the son of the owner of the house to die one shall put to death the son of that builder statute 231 if he has caused the slave of the owner of the house to die he shall give slave for slave to the house to the owner of the house statute 232 if he has caused a loss of goods he shall render back whatever he has caused the loss of because he did not make strong the house he built and it fell from his own goods shall rebuild the house that fell statute 233 if a builder has built a house for a man and has not jointed his work they had joints in their houses okay i just want to point that out 2242 bc and the wall has fallen, the builder at his own call shall make good that wall. Statute 234. Now we have rules about boats. I just want y'all just, just, this is from 2242 BC. They have rules about their boats. If a boatman has navigated a ship of 60 gur for a man, he shall give him two shekels of silver for his fee. Statute 235. And why do they have to have standardized fees? Because the Ronanites were not paying like they were supposed to. They were they were changing the rules. See the story of Joseph and how many times um the 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 man changed his fee, change it again, I'll give you this, change it again, I'll give you that, change it again. This is why they had to standardize it, because the Ronanites were doing stuff like this. <sighs> okay. Statute 235. If a boatman has navigated a ship for a man and has not made his work trustworthy, and in that same year he worked that ship has suffered an injury, the boatman shall exchange that ship or shall make it strong at his own expense and shall give a strong ship to the owner of that ship. Statute 236. If a man has given his ship to a boatman on hire, and the boatman has been careless, has grounded the ship, or has caused it to be lost, the boatman shall render the ship for the owner. Statute 
Statute 237. If a man has hired the boatman and ship and written and with corn, wool, oil, dates, or whatever it be as freight has freighted her, that boatman has been careless and grounded the ship or has caused what is in her to be lost. The boatman shall render back to the ship what he has grounded and whatever in her she he has caused to be lost. Y'all, this is ridiculous. Statute 238. If a boatman has grounded the ship of a man and has refloated her, he shall be give he shall give money half her price. Statute 239. If a man hired a boatman, he shall give him six gur of corn per year. If a ship that is going forward has struck a ship at anchor and has sunk her, the owner of the ship has been sunk. Whatever he has lost in the ship shall recount before God, and that of the ship going forward which sunk the ship at anchor shall render him his ship and whatever of his was lost. So that just tells you that people who were doing these jobs had to be very good at them and they had to be very accurate because they had all of these laws saying you're responsible for whatever happens. You better do whatever it takes. And so now you understand the Pirates of the Caribbean and some of the other boating movies. Um, there's a, a cartoon movie on um, Netflix called, um, fan, not, it's not Fantastic Beats or it's something, but it has a black girl as the lead character. So that story makes a whole lot more sense to me now. Statute 241. If a man has taken an ox on distraint, he shall pay one third of a mean of, of silver. So basically, that's what they were talking about for Yahweh when he they sent him to take this ass or whatever to ride into the town that they were trying to make him pay. And he was like, yeah, we'll get back to you. Statute 242. If a man has hired a working ox for one year, he shall pay four gur of corn as its hire. Statute 243. If a milk milk cow so they had milk cows in 2242 bc so all people who say we never drank milk this 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 they're talking about a milk cow in 2242 bc and it was astonished in their laws so therefore some of y'all need to reconsider your positions all right he shall give the three girl of corn to its owner Statute 244, if a man has hired a ox or sheep and a lion has killed it in open field, that loss is for his owner forsooth. Statute 245, if a man has hired an ox and through neglect or by blows has caused it to die, ox for ox to the owner of the ox he shall render. Statute 246, if a man hired an ox and has crushed its foot or has cut its nape, ox for ox the owner shall he shall render. Statute 247. If a man has hired an ox and has caused it to lose its eye, he shall pay half its price to the owner of the ox. Statute 248. If a man has hired an ox and has crushed its horn, cut off its tail, pierced its nostrils, he shall pay one quarter of its price. That's because these, mo these people was mistreating these animals so bad. Why do you need these laws? Why do you need this? Okay, statute 249. If a man has hired an ox and God has struck it and it has died, the man who has hired the ox shall swear before God and shall go free. Statute 250. If a wild bull in his charge has gored a man and caused him to die, that case has no remedy. Okay, so we're going to stop here and we're going to come back and do another video which will be these last um, from 251 to 282 and then those 35 that they had written on the back of the tablet. So, um, you know, <sighs> please go and download the book. Check out the beloved uh, videos of the people I link to. And, of course, spirits who are here with us, you're invited to go in peace. To my beloved viewers, you're invited to be at peace. And always remember, the Most High is your peace. Shalom.